too. Thank you. Now I feel like I'm a winner. That's what I need to hear. Now I feel it. And thank you. Thank you for the introduction. But I never present without writing my own introduction. And that's my first suggestion to you. Write what you want to hear said about you. Now, how the presenter presents it, that's really not up to you, but you hope that they will follow the script and give you the presence so that when you come up, you really do feel like a winner. And Cynthia, I thank you because I really feel like today is my win day. Speech introductions are critical. And I offer this because that's who we are. We're speakers. Whether you're speaking from the platform or if you're talking to someone just in a conversation, you want them to know something good about you. To recognize that there is a value in being around you and being with you. So think about how you can make sure, excuse me, I have this so that I won't cough, make sure that um, you present yourself in the best light. Visualize it, see it, experience it with every ex exchange that you have. The purpose of an introduction is to elevate the audience's anticipation of who you are. And you will hear in a few minutes how I craft an introduction. But for now, let me give you three components of a winning introduction. The first one is simple, which we know would be, it just details who you are. Now oftentimes we think about who we are, but we really hesitate to write who we are. But a winning introduction utilizes your talent, your experience, and your credentials in that presentation. So in your who, talk about your talent, your experience, and excuse this, and talk about your credentials. And you'll see how important that is in a few minutes. The second component is interest. Audiences are tough these days. <laughs> they want to know why, you know, why are you up here? <laughs> so if you can give them something to engage them right away with your introduction, it's harder. It is harder to hook them later on. So really the question is, okay, I'm here because. And you tell that. Write that in your introduction. And then the third component of a win introduction is novelty. Novelty. Lee, why are you so unique? Why? There's a reason. There's a reason why you are in front of an audience. Tell us. Here's something that I wrote for today, just so you can hear a little bit about novelty. Anita has been a Toastmaster for 15 years. She began her Toastmasters tenure as a charter member of Dawnbreakers. That old goat is still hanging on. <laughs> I mean, 
the reason why I thought it was appropriate, I didn't think Cynthia would say it, but the reason why I thought it was appropriate is I'm setting up something here. And what I think that would imply to you, if she had said it, <laughs> is that I, I'm fun. You know, I'm going to relax. I have something to say, but it's not going to be a technical presentation. You know, so you can, you can relax and enjoy what's coming. All right? So that's part of the novelty. And then sometimes when I'm doing corporate training, and I know that they're expecting a, a lot more about what you've done, who you've spoken to, then I probably will, I, I have written something similar to this. Now you see how short this one is. This is more like what I would use for a technical uh, corporate presentation. And I'm not going to go through all of it, but Here's how I start this thing. Again, talking about passion, novelty. I, Anita is a, compa a compassionate communicator and servant leader. Her mission in life is to share lessons and tools for, and this was my topic that day, unleashing personal power every day. And she believes in living a powerful life. Then I go into authorship, different types of training and stuff like that. Uh, then I go into my leadership information. So that is still setting you up, setting up an audience to recognize credential, recognize that uh, maybe, just maybe, I should be up here in front of you. So when you're crafting your introduction, remember, it's okay. Actually, it's important that you tell us who you are. We think that little blurb that they may put on the brochure or on an agenda is enough. But nowadays, audiences really, really want to know a little bit more about who you are. And then pique their interest. Tell them why you're standing there with them. In earlier years when I walk with a cane, and many of you may not know that about me, I had to include something about the cane. So how I did it to make the audience comfortable is I always said, I am the lady who sticks to the point. <laughs> they got it, just like you did. They got it. And if I wanted to embellish it a little more, I would then talk about my first speech in Toastmasters and how doing an icebreaker made my knees shake so badly that I needed a cane from that point on. <laughs> but what does that do? It disarms the audience. And so, wow, they're ready to hear me tell them just about anything. So that's why writing your own introduction, considering the audience's profile, is critical. That's part of it. But there's a secondary point. Write what you will. At that point, you are in, in control of the lectern. From the second that you are introduced, really, that's your opening for your speech. And so you're in control from that point. Even if the person who is introducing you might flub a little bit, get nervous, because not everyone is comfortable introducing, and I'm sure you've heard some of these poor introductions. 
As a matter of fact, I had one about three weeks ago. I was sitting there wondering, did they find some material that I knew nothing about? <laughs> because, frankly, none of what she said was on the paper that I sent. <laughs> so how do you manage that? Here's a suggestion. What I do when I get these introductions that are a little off course is I say immediately to the audience, that was good, but let me tell you something better. If it is critical that they know who I am. And we move right on into the introduction that I wanted and then I move right into the presentation. It is a responsibility also for the introducer, and Cynthia, I compliment you because I've been listening today. You, you have your own style. And you also, when the speaker closes, you give just a second or two of commentary about what they said. Don't you feel better? Don't you feel listened to? Did you feel listened to, Emmanuel? Of course. And so there's a, there's, a there's a reciprocity to an introduction. You write what you want, and then I think it's an onerous obligation on the introducer to present you well. Present with enthusiasm. You know, don't just... <laughs> Anita's business motto is, come on, come on, let me hear something a little better. Um, wow, I've had the opportunity to read something about Anita and her business model is, and you move right into it. Make us feel like, oh my goodness, this person coming to the lectern is really going to pump it up. And it's an obligation now, speakers. Once that's done, get out there and deliver it. <laughs> Absolutely. And so with everything that we do, there's a win formula. Know who you are and be willing to let the audience know that. And then satisfy us with some interest. Why are you here? Basic question. And then add the novelty. What are your passions? Are you funny? What's your intention? We should know that. And when that formula is utilized, when you stand up and you're ready to go, you can go. I guarantee it. There is value in creating an interesting int introduction. There is worthiness in creating a winning introduction. And there is there is a need for you as a speaker or introducer to say it concisely, know what you, what you guide us through everything, and then sit down. Madam Toastmaster.